actually you hear from the Moon Forum a demo of fiber of our fiber, fiber to the distribution point solution. So what we have here is a setup of uh, how the solution can be deployed and installed in the real world. What we have here as a demo is a setup that includes inside this desk a PC that will act as a server. Uh, we have an OLT that will be uh, the source of our GPON connectivity. And together with this, we have a PDSL 2CO which acts as the legacy uh, connection that the customer already has before switching to FTTP. This cable is the cable that is actually the copper that's coming from the central office. Uh, this is connected through this connector which is actually just a short circuit that we will need later on during the demo to show how the installation is performed. But basically what we have is just a continuous copper cable. These are 50 meters of copper cable that uh, will be actually acting like the copper cable that's inside of the building which is arriving in the home of the customer and this is the master plug inside of the home of the customer. The, this is the cable that is connected to the customer modem and then here we have a PC which is the customer PC that's connected now directly to, to the web server that's inside the box and it is the server that we will use for this thing. If we look at what is the situation at the moment and we look at the interface of the of the CP we can see that the CP is now connected with what looks like a, an old ADSL connection this is actually a VDSL2 connection in profile 8A but now we are connected at 408 megs in downstream what happens when the customer wants to switch to FTTDP Basically what you have is that the, there is fiber that is arriving near to the next distribution point which could be at pole, which could be at floor level, which could be in the basement. So what happens is that the engineer arrives at the distribution point with an HMT1 and installs the HMT1. So just connecting the fiber and cutting the copper cable in two and reconnecting the two endings of the copper cable directly into the HNT1. In this moment, the FTTDP node, the HNT1, is still not powered and that. So, what happens right now is that this system is completely transparent and passed through. So the customer has, a, has had a service disruption of just one minute. So if we update the status of the router, we can see that actually after the installation of the HNT1 node, while this is unpowered, this status of the connection is, is, a, is exactly as if it were before. At this point, if the customer wants to activate the FTTDP server, what the operator needs to do is just to send to the customer the power supplier and eventually the router. This is very helpful because it gives the opportunity to do an installation without scheduling an engineering appointment. The customer receives the power supplier, connects the power supplier to the power socket. What we have here in the RPF1 are two sockets. The first socket in an, is an RJ11 socket, which will become the new master socket, and an RJ12 socket. The RJ12 socket is the one that will send the power directly down to the HNT1 board. So the operations that the customer need to do is just disconnect his modem to the master, from the master socket and reconnect it to the RPF1. Then the customer takes the custom cable, connects it to the RPF1, and connects this cable to the master socket. Doing so, the system will start the training and power will flow through the copper cable down to the HNT1, powering on the system. 
when the system is powered, it automatically will cut out the connection to the central office and will start feeding VDSL2 to the customer using the data coming from the, from the jeep on board. So as we can see, when we connected the cable, the board has powered, it will take one minute to be powered up and we will see that the DSL link will be up again in VDSL2 Profile 30. Now that the link is up again, we can go check in the, in the router and what we can see is that we are now up with VDSL2 in Profile 38 with 227 MAG down and 89 up. Moreover, uh, as a last point, the two installation steps can be done in reverse in order to assure the possibility of migrating the customer back to the old service if he chooses to unsubscribe the service. So if the customer just unplugs his power supplier, he will be able to have the connection directly back to the old central office for both pods and eventually ADSL without uninstalling the HNT1, which can be removed later on by the operator without again scheduling an appointment. Thank you.